This morning we're gonna move the boat. We're gonna put on the mooring ball. It's right out over there. about this if you're not my wise man i've been around for long as my friend says you know the big thing and i think also a lot of people that want to leave their boats in grenada sometimes fear that the the mooring balls are not maintained we bought an old abandoned catamaran spent two years rebuilding her and embarked on a seven thousand mile journey across the atlantic ocean to our dream cruising grounds the beautiful caribbean Subscribe below and follow the adventure as we explore our way up the Caribbean chain of islands to the beautiful Bahamas. Being in Grenada and having the boat cleaned and situated, we had to go to our favorite beach in Grenada, Grand Arms. The water was a perfect temperature and man did we miss the ocean while we were away. So we rented a scooter and we just stopped at the beach for a good old swim and yeah now we're exploring again. Not much exploring for us but showing our friends around showing our friends around Grenada because you know we were here for so long we're practically local. So it is a Sunday afternoon and we're heading off to Hog Island because there's a Young Cruisers meetup. And we always like meeting youngsters like us. If you're a youngster and would like to meet more youngsters who are cruising, be sure to check out the Young Cruisers Association. We sure had a blast. So what's up happy people? This morning we're going to move the boat. We're going to put on the mooring ball. It's right out over there and the boat's gonna stay uh, for hurricane season while we fly out and yeah so we gotta start getting everything ready we leave in a week from today and super stoked to fly out sad to leave the bait the boat because we haven't had much sailing this season only a couple of months but um yeah keen for the new adventure and go do that and then we're back at the end of the season to move the boat up through the caribbean bvis usvis uh, dominica and Bahamas is the plan for next season. So, yeah, let's move this baby, get her anchored down. We were unsure what to do with Lady Africa during hurricane season, as we would be flying out. Options were haul out, mooring wall, or leave her on anchor. We opted for the mooring wall. To haul out in Grenada was going to be costly, and our budget could not afford months on the hard again. So we opted for the next plan. Get a mooring ball that was in good condition. Nothing is a guarantee if a hurricane comes through. So it was the best option for us. My heart is full and aching, strong. So we're gonna have a scooter day with Joel. Michael is supposed to come, but she has work to do. And Dave and Lance, we're gonna go check out the monkeys, but I mean, we've showed you guys that twice, I think, on our videos. We're not going to show it again. So we'll just give you like a quick recap today. And then, and then we're going to the rum shop. And then we're going to the rum distillery, which we haven't done in Grenada yet, which is surprising because rum was invented in the West Indies. So we're pretty excited to go do that today. And I lost my voice two days ago and I finally got it back so I can talk again. I probably shouldn't talk too much. But yeah, we're excited. Don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't already and click on the notification bell to go to when we upload a new episode and like this video as well as share it with your friends and family. It's a free way you can support our channel.
After struggling our way around Grenada, we stopped at Annadel Waterfalls to show Dave, Lance and Joel. Little did we know, Joel had other tricks up his sleeve. Joel decided with the permission of the local diver to jump off of Annadel Waterfalls. Now. Yes. If you'd like to see how Joel got the courage to do that jump, go check out on their channel, Bums on a Boat. After lunch, we headed off to Westerhall Run Distillery. We made it here to Westerhall Run Distillery. Um, we went to see the monkeys, but unfortunately, there were no monkeys. And um, but we've seen them twice. You can see in our previous episodes. And we took a trip to Annadale Waterfalls for lunch, which we also did, which you can see in our previous episodes. But we have not done a distillery here in Grenada, so. We're pretty excited to come and check it out. I don't know if they're doing tours, the guy said they're not. But we'll go ask inside and see what they say. Um, but yeah, and a fun fact, uh, rum was invented in the West Indies. So I guess you have to do a rum tour or rum tasting or whatever, drink lots of rum in the Caribbean. Westerhall Rum Estate has been around since the 18th century. Solid, come feel. No inside lift channel. Wow, that is super thick, huh? <laughs> Jeez. This this must have been the ship's boiler on the way. Yeah. Half to go inside, of course. Okay, tell me to a guide what's what's here. So up top there, I think they did the mash. Got the reach, got the mash going, and then it would flow in through that channel into here, and I think yeah, they would heat it up a bit more like actual potato mash no not, not like mashed potatoes like mashed sugar cane <laughs> but can't you make something out of mash yeah like you can potatoes i think potatoes made vodka all right ricky you're giving some facts here he absolutely he is. absolutely now remember guys take this with a grain of salt if he knows <laughs> or he doesn't know he's gonna act like he knows i'm a trained alcohol professional they oh. used to mash up top there then distribute it into these pots, heat it up, and keep on stirring it. Wester Hall unfortunately had no tours, but we had our tour guide Ricky to kind of give us an idea of what happened. Okay. Good size thread there. It's like an M8 nut. <laughs> Imagine you, your boat had to take that. You need a new prop shaft. Dave, it's already de-rusted, all the rusts out, it's about an M8 size. I wonder what the hell is going with that. This would have definitely been part of the shaft that does all the milling. The gear system here, a couple of gears missing for sure. They would have probably, oh here's the most, here they. There you go. There's no on top there in the and that's that's the, the and, and the, the, the pulp used to come out the yeah. bottom and run down. This is a, I wonder why they had a small version versus that thing. That's the real McCoy that's there. Yeah, it's a yeah. full size model there. This is what they have in Mozambique when they make us our cane sugar drink. Pretty much, just on that's a much smaller scale than this. And this is still the tiny ones. You must think how much cane they were processing if that's the size of the How do you know so much about this if you're not? I'm a wise man. I've been around for long as my friend says. Who's that? <laughs> Glenn. Glenn. <laughs> Whenever I ask him a question, he's like, I've been around for a long time. Ricky's our tour guide and we put him to the test because 
I've learned with Ricky, sometimes he, he always acts like he knows what he's talking about and like 95% he does. But I was, the 5 I was like, is, yeah, I was a little <laughs> bit, yeah, but we've confirmed everything. He was dead on with everything. So I bet you guys uh, really appreciate Ricky dropping knowledge left and right. <laughs> Leave me in the dust. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. My little mango fita. We couldn't get a tour of the thingy, but they gave us mangoes. There's so many on the floor too. Manga. I'm up there. Look at all these thieves, man. Oof. We're gonna chow mangoes. Thieves. We only got two days left on the island, but we're taking mangoes for ten days. <laughs> I'll smash three, four mangoes at once. Okay. Beautiful chicken. Why would you... Uh... We really wanted to know what the rum process was, so we headed off to Clark's Court Rum Factory to check it out. In case you didn't know, rum is made from sugar cane. This sugar cane would be collected by a person, or nowadays, from a machine. Once the sugar cane was collected, it was pushed through a mill to harvest the water and sugar juice. Oh. So the tools on the wall were the original tools that was used to repair and maintain the mill. So this was what we actually had for all the minutes. On the floor we have a juice extractor, which we are Very If you're interested in getting a closer look, you can go up these stairs and have some on the opposite side. That's really cool. What do you think they grease that thing up with molasses? You think they use molasses? I bet you. So most industries they'll use like a hundred percent non-toxic if it's for food stuff. But I reckon for back in the day they would just use molasses between the gears. That's my that's my theory. But let's there give it a. Again. This guy's just a well. Oh. Oh, what do we got here? I'm not gonna taste that. Doesn't smell like it though. Does it smell like? Molasses. It smells like oil. Mm. What do you think? I, I'm baffled. I did not really... Freaking cool. No. Oh, there's the, there's the juicer. So where they extract. So obviously there's a piece missing, yeah? Where that, yeah, right? where they're squishing it, yeah. And then where's the juicer? So th this piece right there. And then that would be falling down into there somewhere. So they'd have to maybe run on a conveyor belt. Oh. Or is there just a channel there? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. Uh, I had no idea it took all this to make rum. A lot of gears. I thought you just uh, found the rum on an island. Yeah, a flywheel, yeah. Model engine, 70 RPM. Oh, single piston. It's like a train. Steam train rod, pretty much. Wow, that's cool. That's cool. There's the ducting for the piping. Oh, there's the boiler feed system. Oh, this is cool. Do you smell what it smells like in here? Yeah. Like just like heavy molasses mm. smell. So she said to go this way and meet her on the other side? Oh, yeah, she did. Yeah, you're right. Cool, it, it smells so strong in here. Most rum is produced from molasses, which is made from sugar cane. Then, yeast and water are added to the base ingredient to start the fermenting process. Clark's Court no longer the, like processes their sh uh, sugar cane to make rum. 
So they import the molasses now from Panama, which is in that big container, storage container, whatever you call it, outside there. After fermenting comes distilling. There's no standard method that is used. Some use pot stills, but most use column still distillation. Most countries require rum to be aged at least one year, and this is performed using bourbon casks, or it can be done in stainless steel tanks. Then is aging. It can be aged in oak casks, and it will become dark, where stainless steel tanks remain virtually colorless. After aging rum, it is normally blended. Light rums can be filtered to remove colored gain during aging, and dark rums can have caramel added for extra color. It comes around these types of goes into this column for the analyzer. Heat is added at the bottom with such a boiling process so it evaporates. Then goes into the condensers at the top and then we get 95% of the water. Yes. It then cools and comes down the rectifier and goes into the cooling tank. And that's how rum is made, folks. So that stuff is my clock score. Afterwards we headed off for a rum tasting. Want to chuck. So we're heading off to Alex and Mandy from See the Little Things. They invited us for dinner before all of us fly out in our different ways. Cool. <laughs> so Sounds we're gonna go spend some time with everyone and just have a good dinner and chat crap like we always do. So yeah, let us go. They're like right here too, which is nice. So it's our boat good. guard, George. He's gonna keep watch of our boat. How are you doing, George? So, the guy that we rent in the mooring ball from, uh, George, he says we must follow him. He's going to show us something. And that's it. That's the weak spot. Just look at it, you see what I'm talking about. Is this on the on the bottom of the mooring? Yeah, but that would be the weakest part. Yeah. And then you'll have, you'll have to change them. Before they go. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, check out the corrosion on this. It's like pretty much that's all that's eaten up. That's inside here, so, right? You see here? You have to look for this here. Yeah. That's all corroded out? Much thicker when it's new? Yes. Yeah. When, when it's actually feeling new. Have we also got a uh, chain, chain on the bottom of our one? Yeah. yeah. When, it's, when it's okay, it's going to be uh, something like this. Like yeah. That. This one is used already, right? Yeah. Right, but this, when it stays down to the bottom. Still good, yeah. That's how we stay. You see inside here, so? Yeah. That's the most important thing you have to look for. Yeah. And this swivel's right at the bottom where it's attached to the, um, to the block itself? Yeah. 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 And what's what's the purpose for for the for the chain at the bottom? Hmm? What's the purpose to have chain at the bottom? The purpose of chain is for if you wrap around the um the, the concrete block, yeah, or if you wrap around the um the the, the sand screw, yeah, it means the chain are going to wrap around it, not the rope, not the rope, because the rope is much weaker than the chain um, from chafing. For chafing, yeah, this is the size of rope you use. So if you don't want to use a timber, you have to twist the rope like this. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And then you lock this onto the chain. That's some big splice. That some is big, so big. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Then the technique in it now, you have to back splice the rope. Okay. Back splicing means like this. Uh, you know, like this one here. So this one you back splice it. Yeah. Another big thing, and I think also a lot of people that want to leave their boats in Grenada sometimes fear that the, the mooring balls are not maintained, but 
our lines that we attach to are super thick and they look good they really look good you're not like picking it up and there's a whole bunch of muscles and everything attached to it because that's like a first sign to me that someone doesn't maintain it yeah but, you, you but have, ours looks good you don't have a, bro uh, uh, a block and science school we got both on ours yeah both wow, well that's, that's so that's good. that's extra good <laughs> it gives us peace of mind while we're away Yo, that um science. we're not going to go anywhere what, what would happen in a, if, if there's a hurricane strike yeah yeah uh, most likely in the events another boat has come and train, get on to it and yeah. when you're using a lot of um when you're using a lot of timber yeah I use a big timber for the rope. I'm not sure the size of the timber. I was gonna show him that thing. I use this size of the timber. Wow. But yeah. But what I have to know. That's a big timber. Yeah, the wear and tear of the timber end of the end here will go quick. Oh yeah? And then you start a cut. Starts cutting. Yeah, the, 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 um, with the with the with the shackle. Yeah, yeah. So you have to change it before. After getting the breakdown on how Moraine Ball is from George, we headed over to see the little things and met up with Joel and Michael there as well for dinner. And so a perfect day ended off with a perfect night with good friends. Don't forget to subscribe below if you haven't already and give this video a big thumbs up. See you guys next week.